So in this video, we will see how to see the midpoint voltage uh, of an inverter. Let's go into the Altis bias and uh, let's grab the things, uh, new schematic, and uh, go and grab our NMOS and PMOS for an inverter. As we know, we need an NMOS and a PMOS. So we must know uh, why am I using this NMOS for, not just NMOS, right? So if you click on NMOS and it says N channel MOSFET transistor, let's say I click on that and I place it and I'll right click on that, it says uh, MOSFET, okay? It is a discrete MOSFET, okay? That's why it is called an NMOS and uh, NMOS uh, three, it's a three terminal device, okay? Let's delete this, okay? And uh, I'll open, or NMOS 4 and if you see this N channel MOSFET transistor with explicit substrate connection used for monolithic MOSFETs. What does it mean? A monolithic MOSFET is used for a monolithic integrated circuit. A monolithic integrated circuit is a integrated circuit where all the components, many circuits are built into a single piece of silicon substrate. Okay. That's why it is called as monolithic transistor. So this is extensively used in um, integrated circuit. I'll place it right here. And uh, that's why we are using four terminal devices. Okay, this terminal is, uh, is a substrate terminal or a bulk terminal, and it has to be connected to the ground as we discussed in the previous videos uh, for NMOS and it has to be ground in the sense it's it should be connected to the lowest voltage within the circuit and uh, if it is a PMOS it should be connected to the highest voltage within the circuit okay okay let's place a PMOS together uh, so we select PMOS 4 also and let me place it over here okay we know that the drains of the drain of each of the MOSFETs should be connected, right? So what else we need? We need two more voltage sources. So let's go and grab them. One right here for gate and one right here for drain. Okay, it's not for drain actually. This is the source for uh, PMOS, okay? So let's drag few ground terminals. Right. All these are actually single ground terminals with multiple copies. Okay, let's connect them all together. Okay. Right. This should be connected to the ground and also the NMOS to the ground. And of course, this voltage source also to ground. And these two. This one, let's go down and click on these people. Okay, gate and gate should be connected together. So I hope you know the operation of an inverter for uh, doing all these, right? I hope you have understood why we are doing all these. Okay and connect this to that terminal right and let's give some voltages for this let it be 1.8 volts and this also be 1.8 volts okay i have given the drain voltage and the gate voltage now what else i need to get the output right here right so i'll make a label over there as my v out okay v out and i'll place this v out over here okay so after this uh, i'm going to also teach you about how to include a library to uh, ld spice so i have already downloaded uh, a library uh, it's right here if you can see tsmc 180 nanometer cmos.lib this is from Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, and it's for uh, 180 nanometer node. 180 nanometer node is a, a very mature node as far as modern technologies are concerned. So this is a very old technology, 418, yeah, you see, uh, 2010. 
but uh, we'll use it because this is uh, available other things are not available for free and it was developed for p spice but also can be used for lt spice but because p spice is um, a paid version of spice so i'm not using that we are learning lt spice which is uh, a free version right and i'll uh, keep this uh, in the description you can download it and you can use it as well so the model name is given here if you can see tsmc 180 nanometer n is for n mos okay this model name is very useful and if you don't include this your circuit will not accept the these parameters which are given over here so you must mention the name as tsmc 180 nanometer n when you include this library and for, for n mos and for p mos you must include this name which is the name of the model so uh, it has some other values like tox and all these all these are parameters tox vth zero the threshold voltage the oxide thickness uh, all those things you can use this for uh, calculation you see this vsat plus to saturation all those things so how do i include that library it's in my desktop so i go click on dot operator right this is where uh, i can uh, this is a pspice directive where i can include the libraries or uh, use some parameters or all those things type dot include so i'm including a library Let's enter and i'll keep it somewhere over here i have already told you that we have to include the name of the pmos and nmos from the library to properly include them so let's go to the li uh, file and uh, copy this name okay and paste it over here and click like that click enter and copy this pmos name and okay and come over here and paste over here and click enter okay now it's been included so now we will discuss how to uh, run and see the midpoint voltages right so if we want to do that i have to run this and go to dc sweep dc sweep it's varying the dc voltage so what voltage i have to vary of course i have to vary the gate voltage which is v1 over here so i'll type v1 and uh, what kind of a dc sweep is this it's a linear <coughs> start value is uh let's start value be zero stop value is 1.8 and increment in terms of 0.2 voltages okay let's click okay and uh yeah it's placed over here no problem with that okay and i'll see the voltage over here and this is where you can see the plot of the output of an inverter when the input is raised linearly right the input is linear if you want to see the input i'll click on input as well so this is the input and this is how the output right so the intersection of these two points is actually the midpoint voltage input voltage is equal to output voltage it is where actually the midpoint voltage is okay if you want to see them click on this and you'll get a cursor what is the midpoint voltage uh, i'll zoom into this and place it over right over there Let's see where uh, we are missing it right see this is almost 720 volts sorry 720 millivolts <clears throat> so this is where they are meeting right this is the midpoint voltage this is the midpoint voltage formula which is coming over here only thing that we can vary is these parameters which are design parameters so beta n or beta p i'll vary one of these not both of them because if i vary both of them similarly these two should get cancelled and you should get the same vm so let's see let's vary these one of these uh, we don't want to vary mu n or c ox because they are process parameters not design parameters mu n uh, c ox uh, they are uh, decided in the foundry and it will be given to you so as a designer you don't have to you can't vary them but only thing that we can vary is w and l so i'll vary only one of them and see uh, how the uh, thing varies right 
uh, I'll vary the W, the W because for uh, uh, a technology, L is always a constant. See, for this 180 nanometer a length, and that length is constant, right? So I'll vary the width, width of the transistor. So let's place here. See, if I want to vary uh, this uh, during uh, uh, the simulation when the simulation runs and this uh, has to take uh, multiple values and plot multiple uh, graphs how can i do that i'll i'll do that by using a parameter i'll i'll use uh, w as a parameter okay i'll tell you how to do that okay so i'm varying the p mos w so i'm varying the beta p right so how do i vary it here okay i'll go to dot operator again so i'll press uh, dot step parameter param param means parameter and i'll use w as a parameter the stop start value is i'll use start value as 1080 nanometer and i'll use uh, stop value as some 5400 nanometer which is five times 1080 nanometer and just take steps of see this first uh, argument says uh, where to start where to end and the last one is in steps of what? In steps of 1080 nanometer. So I'll click on, click enter and place it somewhere over here. So I'll run this once again. And uh, click on V out. Okay, probe. And uh, just maximize this. So this is how output of the inverter looks like if we vary the W. If we vary W of the PMOS, what are we doing? We are varying the beta P and this is what happens, right? Let's click on the input and see where are the, see this is my input, right? The, the midpoint voltage is increasing as you see, as I increase my, if you want to see them in terms of steps, let's see in terms of steps. <clears throat> So I click on 5.0. This is where the five point thing. Okay. So if I use a cursor and place it over here, where this right. So I have to zoom in. So let's place it over here. So it's almost 721 millivolts. So 721 millivolts is the midpoint voltage. Okay. And uh, let's see it for some other voltage that's a three point oh, sorry 1.08 the starting this voltage is very less let's go and see them so by varying the w we were able to vary the midpoint voltage about 200 milli again i told you that if we make this beta n and beta p uh, both equal like if i vary them uh, together similarly what should happen the, the effect should cancel right this if i vary beta n uh, by same amount the ratio of these two will be same so this vm shouldn't change let's see if it happens okay i'll go here and uh, i have made this w as w and uh, this w was kept constant and it, it it used to take the default value so let let me make this w also uh, this width also w so let's see what happens what is our assumption the midpoint voltage vm shouldn't vary even if we are varying the w right that's what should happen according to that equation if it happens here also we are correct right let's click on output see the v out it's not varying at all they are all overlapped and uh, it became a single step this is because of the equation. The equation says the ratio of beta n, sorry, beta p by beta n matters, not single parameter, right? If you vary both of them together, we can't get um, the variation in midpoint voltage, right? That's it. Thank you.